The University of Glasgow, one of the oldest and most prestigious universities in the world, founded in 1451, it has played host to many great physicists, such as Lord Kelvin, James Watt and William Rankin. It is known far and wide for its academic achievements and its advances in research into physics. Yo, this is a theory all about how light like, racing get diffracted to go around. A body, an object that sits right there, I could tell you try to find it, but you couldn't if you stared. In the west end of Glasgow, high up on the hill, there's a building full of physics where you can get your fill. Of knowledge and wisdom compiled through the ages, inventions, discovery, we got it on our pages. We've had a couple of sound alumni, you might know their names, like Einstein or Kelvin, yeah, we got game. So relax and put your feet up, we're about to throw some knowledge about the research we are doing in our prestigious science college. As you may already know, light changes speed and direction when entering a material with a new refractive index. This can be seen clearly in prisms, where the air-glass interface can distort and magnify images according to difference in refractive indices. What if I told you that refractive index can be negative? Although this is extremely difficult to achieve physically, light ray direction change can be effectively achieved using specific configurations of materials with positive refractive indices. This is the case with metatoys. If you cover an area with these prisms, then something interesting does happen. You get something like a window that changes light ray direction in an interesting way. That we can sort of show you couldn't really achieve in any other way. That's not entirely true. That you couldn't achieve properly wave optically, let's put it this way. As light passes through the metatoy, it acts as though it's been broken up into individual wavefront pieces meaning that the behaviour of light is closer to a ray physics description than a wave physics description. The output surface is not continuous and not mathematically conservative, so vector components of each light ray can be altered by the metatoy. The theories into how this takes place are still being developed. This results in the possibility of practically utilising many laws of refraction. For example, light rays can be rotated, flipping the image as shown with an individual dove prism. Combinations of metatoy surfaces can be used to manipulate light to achieve a variety of optical applications. For example, reversing depth perception, which is known as pseudoscopic imaging, or in a medical context to achieve area-specific magnification, helping people with eye conditions. And, perhaps most impressively, cloaking capabilities can be achieved. The headline application for transformation optics is usually cloaking. If you you can, but just by sending light rays, making them flow around a central volume and then continue along their original trajectories, you can hide whatever is in that central volume because no light, no light interacts with it, all light flows around it. And because the light rays continue along their original trajectories, everything looks as normal. You don't see that there was anything there that, that redirected your light. To understand changing the path of light in this manner, consider the analogy. Placing a box over an object means it is no longer visible. However, this isn't exactly invisibility as anyone can tell that something is still there. Similarly, aberrations or offsets from the original configuration of the light rays would show an outside observer that the light has been manipulated, making true invisibility a complex process to achieve. Like a boulder in a stream, as we look further downstream, the water flow is returned to normal and evidence of the boulder's presence is lost. Despite the physical descriptions of the cloaking process, the concept still may seem a little far-fetched. 97, 98, 99, 100. Ready or not, here I come. Found you, Timmy. Now it's your turn to count. Ah, oh, shucks. If only I was better at hiding. Ha ha ha! Well, Timmy, I've got the solution for you. Jeepers! It's Dr. Davy F. Juke Street, the world's leading expert on metatoys from the University of Glasgow. Ha ha ha! That's right, Timmy. Having trouble with hiding, I see. You bet, mister. Well, wouldn't it be easier if you were... invisible? Holy mackerel! Dr. Davy, that would be great! I would win every time, but that's not possible. Is it? 
Well, Timmy, it is. Using our painted new Meta Toys jacket, we are able to take advantage of some of the peculiar phenomena exhibited by light when redirected through a complex array of microscopic lenses. It redirects the light around the wearer, rendering them effectively invisible. Wow, it's so simple. <laughs> yes, indeed, Timmy. Now, here's one I made earlier. Why not try it on? Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm invisible. Thanks, Dr. D. Oh my god, I can't believe it worked. Thanks, Dr. Davies. You're welcome, Timmy. Now run along and show the other kids your jacket. I have other homes to burst into uninvited. <laughs> Goodbye. However, Using different light-cancelling strategies, cloaking has already been achieved on a small scale at universities around the world, using specific wavelength, radio or microwaves. The current research at Glasgow aims to develop metatoys to achieve cloaking on a large scale for wavelength ranges including visible light. Well, I do a bit of teaching. I have a PhD student at the moment. He and I, we work, we are sort of the core team, if you like, who works on all of these projects. We try to develop some idea. For example, it might come out of this complex imaging. And we say, well, this should work, let's try it out. I take supervision groups, small groups of students that sit in my office. I also work with uh, international collaborators. You meet them at conferences and you get to chat and then you, well, we try to do an experiment. If this is not possible, then we, um, then we simulate. The idea really was that, well, in an ideal world, if you invent something interesting, like an interesting new window, you would build one and then play with it. But it actually costs a lot of money to build them and takes a long time. So we thought, what can we do? And what we did is we wrote a simulator for it. So we now have our fully featured ray tracer, Tim, that can simulate well, certainly the view through metatoys, different combinations of metatoys. We can have curved metatoys. We can have, you know, all sorts of windows that we can look through, combinations of windows, different geometries. Um, and when we, then we had some fun, we decided to add 3D capabilities to it. So if you happen to have some 3D red, blue goggles, anaglyph goggles, then you can see everything in 3D. And um, finally, Tim also has the capability to simulate the view if you're moving at relativistic speed. Metatoys is only one of the many research projects being carried out in the School of Physics and Astronomy at Glasgow University today. From the impact gravitational waves have on our solar system to the standard model of an atom, Glasgow sits at the forefront of modern science, providing information and knowledge that can take us to the technological future we only thought possible in fiction. Solid state physics, hard disks made of new materials that would waste little energy as heat and store much greater quantities of information. Optical tweezers, a tool that uses a highly focused laser beam to move microscopic objects as small as a single atom. Tools and processes that wouldn't look out of place in Star Trek, but with the recent leaps forward in modern research, are inching closer to reality. In 1960, when Theodore H. Maiman produced the first operational laser, the science community labelled it as a solution in search of a problem. What could this new technology be used for? Today, lasers are used substantially in diverse roles for almost every modern industry, from eye surgery to barcode scanning. A research field as obscure as metatoys could develop applications as fruitful and vital to our everyday life as those developed from lasers. But the research needs to be done before the rewards can be reaped. Human beings are defined by our curiosity. We constantly strive to learn more about the universe around us. But for us to quench our thirst for knowing, Research, study and learning will always be the foundations for the future.
Thank you.